In this video, I will demonstrate five different ways to add color overlays to an image in Adobe Photoshop. With an image already open in Photoshop, I chose this image to show how a color overlay will impact bright and dark areas. First, make a duplicate copy of your background layer and name it Photo Filter. Make sure that layer is selected. And an easy way to add color to an image is to go to Image, Adjustments, and photo filter. The choices listed here are based on colored filters that photographers add to the end of their camera lenses to tint a photo, and Photoshop gives you a variety of traditional photo filters. You can, of course, make changes to the color and to the density of each of the filters. Here we have sepia tone. This is a favorite filter for making your image look antique with tints and shades of brown. Photo filters do have limitations though. So in the second example, I will show you how to add a color overlay on this new layer, turning off the visibility of the photo filter layer. If you go to the bottom and find the effects icon, then click blending options, your layer style panel will pop up. On the left, you can add a check mark next to color overlay and then click on the text color overlay to get the options here. This is the default, but you can double click into the gray box and change the color with the color picker panel. Next, click on the blend mode dropdown and you have 27 different blend modes to play with. I'll choose dissolve as an example and then bring down the opacity and you'll see the overall effect. So you can click through and find a blend mode that you like best. And what it is doing is the color overlay is blending with the pixels in your image based on the different style of blend modes chosen. And one of the most popular is overlay, so I'll pick that. And again, here you can adjust the opacity or transparency of that blend mode. And you can make these settings the default, or you can reset them back to the gray default and click OK. In this third example, we will do similar steps, but this time with a gradient overlay. So make sure that new layer is selected, go down to effects, blending options, and this time click the check mark next to your gradient overlay and click the words gradient overlay to bring up the defaulted options. First, I'll change the blend mode to overlay because I know that's the one I like the most. And I will bring down the opacity a touch. And then here in the gradient dropdown is where the fun really begins. You have a variety of gradients to choose from. So I'll pick this magenta to blue gradient. And here in this check mark, you can reverse the color order. In this dropdown, you can adjust the style of the gradient. It's defaulted to linear, but you also have radial from the center out angle from one side to the other. And this is another reason I chose this picture because I knew it would divide in half. There's also reflected. So it's gonna go from magenta to blue to magenta. And diamond, which is a little hard to see with the blue in the center. So I'll reverse the order. And hopefully now you'll be able to see the diamond shape with the magenta in the center. I'll change back to the angle style and rotate this dial to show you the different degrees. And scale allows you to transition the colors more subtly or more drastically. And this icon on the right gives you a preview of your overlay. Again, you can make the settings here the default or reset to the original default. Click OK. In this fourth demonstration, I will use the gradient overlay and change the colors to achieve a sepia effect. Go down to effects in your layer styles. Click on the check mark for gradient overlay and click on the text. I'll change the blend mode to overlay and click on the gradient color. If you go down to neutrals, you have this nice peachy tan color to start with. However, you might wanna add in some additional tones. So if you double click on the color itself, the gradient editor panel will come up and you can double click on the stop below to bring up the color picker and change the color of that stop. The diamond allows you to adjust the transition between the two colors and clicking in the negative space allows you to add additional stops. I will double click on the stop on the right to change it to a lighter tint. And now I have two diamonds to adjust the transitions between these three colors. 
I like how this looks, so I'll hit enter or return on my keyboard to accept that gradient. And again, in this panel, you can make further adjustments. For sepia tone specifically, I like an overlay such as darken or soft light or hue for that antique look. For this fifth example, we'll add a gradient overlay and then mask out some parts of your image. With that layer selected, go to the effects panel to bring up the layer styles, click the check mark and the text for the gradient overlay. And I will choose something more dramatic for coloring like this, but I wanna add a third color. So maybe I'll add a stop and make it a bright lime green color to stand out. And now I have my gradient overlay. However, I only want it to impact the interior of the picture, not the outdoors or the building across the way. To do this, click OK for that layer style. Make sure this layer is still selected and then go down to the bottom, click on Add Layer Mask. Here you will see a white rectangle thumbnail added to your layer, and this is the mask. Over in your toolbar, select the brush tool. And while you're here, also make sure that the black box here is on top of the white. If it's not, you can click these little arrows and it will flip those colors. But remember, you want black on top of white. Now come back to your image with your brush and click on the areas that you would like to remove the color overlay. You will see the areas being removed over here in the white thumbnail. They show up as these gray brush strokes. And be sure the white mask is still selected in your layer, not the picture thumbnail. This is a common mistake. You can use the bracket keys on your keyboard as the shortcut to adjust the size of your brush. And you can also adjust your brush settings up in the control bar in this dropdown. So I'm removing the color from the building, landscape, and the silhouette. The brush is still leaving quite a bit of gradient overlay, so I noticed for the settings in my brush in my control bar, the opacity is at 40%. I'll adjust that to 100% and now go over that area. It's doing a much better job at removing the entirety of the gradient. Also in the control bar, you can adjust the flow, which is the speed of how much the brush is laying down the effect. If you have removed some of the color that you didn't want to remove, go back to the black and white squares and click the flippy arrows for the boxes, switch so that the white is now on top. Then you can brush back over the overlay to the areas where it was removed by accident. Then flip back to black being on top and continue removing any additional colors and so forth. Once you've finished, you can turn on and off the visibility of your masked layer, and you will see that the overlay is only on certain parts of your image. So now it's time to save your work. Go to File, Save As, and I save it in my Creative Cloud files in a folder for this class as my first name, last initial underscore. This is Unit 2.1 Overlays. And then I go to File, Save As, and I save another copy as a JPEG for my website. And there you have five different ways to add color overlays to an image in Adobe Photoshop.